Hi, and welcome back to another episode of PowerShell Garage. We'll be continuing our LS 6.0 LQ4 build by showing the oil system being primed along with the valley cover installation. Enjoy. So now what we're gonna do is attempt to pressurize the oil system. i pop that plug out. What we're gonna do is hook up a pressurized system here to the oil feed. I'm gonna use a motive brake leader to do it, but we're gonna put pressurized oil in that port, fill the entire engine with pressurized oil, or as if it were running, but we don't have to actually turn the crank to do it. So it's kind of like back in the day, you put a screwdriver in your drill to turn the, the oil pump on like a fallback Chevy. Of course, you never really drop the screwdriver in the crankcase and have to go fishing for it. That's why you use the correct tool. But if you didn't use the correct tool, you know, you fish for it. So you pump up the oil pressure just by hitting the oil pump. Well, on an LS, that's not possible because the oil pump's driven from the front of the crank. So you can't run the oil pump without also turning the crank. The alternative people have come up with is that they pressurize from here, which goes directly to the oil pump. And then I'll run oil, for one, backwards through the oil pump so it'll prime the pump. That way it'll actually work when you go to start. And it will also prime the rest of the oiling system in the engine by filling all the oil galleys. We should be able to see oil come up to here and if this sensor is leaking, leak here. We should also see it come out of all of our push rod holes at the top and leak onto the rocker arms. I do also have this pressure sensor down here so we can see what our pressure looks like down here at the filter port. I'm hoping to get 20 to 30 PSI out of that brake leader. It's not the same as if it were running, but it should be a pretty good simulation of checking for oil leaks and also getting oil into all the different places that we could. Let's still turn the engine over a couple times to make sure that it's in all the, the rod bearings because the rod bearings only get fed at certain times. But we'll see how it goes. All right. Picked up in Speedway. I had no idea what to get. So I just, oh, I found this. And it was the same price as regular oil, so I got this. It's high zinc, which we don't really need because we're not doing a flat tap at cam, but we're still doing an engine break in. So, Lucas engine break in oil, SAE 30, just regular weight oil. It says it's high zinc and high phosphorus, but of course it doesn't say how much. It just, it just says that it's high. It smells like oil. It's breathing. And mess. And it's empty. <laughs> Fortunately, it was empty when it decided to fly across the room. We get the opportunity to use a nice shop and, of course, immediately make a mess. At least it won't stick to the floor. So my motive brake leader was able to hold about two quarts of this break-in oil. It just has this uh, pump to go with it. It's kind of like a pressure sprayer used to fertilize your lawn. But uh, you just put this in there, pressurize it, and it'll send pressure into the entire oiling system of the LS. Of course, we're hooked up right here, which is gonna feed the pump, and it's gonna feed all the oil galleys as well, so it should go down fill the filter. We should be able to see pressure come up on this gauge here. Run oil up to this sensor, then it'll fill the two main oil galleys. Should lubricate all the mains and also lubricate uh, all the lifters until we see oil come into the lifter and then come out up here uh, at the top of the push rod. And that way we know we have all the air out of the system and the entire system is circulating oil. Since the engine is was fully taken down in hot tanks, all of the oil galleys are completely clear, which is great, except that there's no oil in them. So even with all this engine assembly lube, you're still going to spend some moment of time when the engine starts without oil, which people don't like or concerns them, concerns me as well. So we're just going to make this up as we go and see if we can pressurize some oil into this 
overall. This is probably going to take a lot of manual pumping. I'm sure we're going to find very entertaining. <laughs> This little tank goes to about 30 psi is what it says. I'm not sure if it'll actually get there. I'm up to about 20 here at the bottle. Let's give it a moment and see if we get anything over here. I can hear things happening. I'll try to keep this pressurized at about 20. Definitely hear things going on. Oh, you know what? I already got oil up here at two lifters. Nice. I don't see any pressure. Rotating the crank 90 degrees and see if that does anything. Well, I guess 180. Cam 90 degrees. I see something move, didn't it? Yep, it's finally coming up here. I wonder if we just had to push through that long of an air bubble. I don't, I don't think this straw flows very much. I think that's probably one of the design flaws of this, using the motive leader for this is that there's not enough volume in here to overcome just the size of the oiling system and how much it consumes. Yeah, we are finally getting pressure here on the gauge. Maybe we were just still feeling the oil filter that whole time? That's what I was wondering. If maybe you weren't going to see pressure until the oil filter was Maybe. Full. I mean, we've used probably over a quart already. This bottle's at exactly 25. We're seeing about 18 and a half here. 18 and a half. This is actually a nice quality gauge. Not really necessary for measuring oil pressure, but you know what, it was free, and uh, I was just trying to keep the budget under control for this, and, and this is all these $15, $20 transactions that are just killing you, like this little $5 adapter here, and, and this double-ended NPT fitting, it's like $4.75, and like everything just starts to add up like crazy when you're buying 20 $10 transactions at a time. So, saved a lot of money, I already had these fittings, already had these fittings, and this Plate, like I said, I'm already going to use for the oil pressure sending unit in the C10. As you rotate, you're exposing or lining up the holes in the crank that feed the rod bearings. So the crank has one hole for every rod bearing that's inside the main. I actually think it has two for each two main, or each main has two. I don't know. Someone who knows more about engines could explain this. It's not me. As that hole comes around and gets into the top half of the main, there's a, a groove in there where the oil feeds the main. It also feeds the rod while the hole is in that little path. So for whatever that is, 160 degrees of its travel, the hole is exposed that feeds the rod bearing. And then that goes around the bottom side of the main, it gets no oil, and it comes back around and gets exposed again. And each main has two holes, one feeds you know, the rod next to it this way, and then one feeds the rod next to it this way. There's little angle holes that go through the crank. That's why it's important that you clean your crank adequately so that those holes are clean. So what we're doing now by rotating is we're lining those up, and those rod bearings will be taking oil as they get exposed. for the, uh, the stupid questions. So the uh, uh, 
the lifters are probably still being filled, right? Before you're gonna start seeing it out of all of them. Yeah, so it should have to fill the lifter through a little tiny hole on the side of it. The hole is exposed in the uh, oil galley that runs front to back. So it should be able to fill the lifter and then once the lifter is full, it'll start coming out the top of it into the push rod. And then it has to fill the whole push rod, which is seven and a half, 7.4 inches long before we see it come out up here. And the lifters are under preload which does impact their ability to fill. Rotating it, of course, helps that. So pressure comes on and off. But you're still, you're never gonna get rid of that preload. You'll either have preload or you have the weight of a valve on it. If you try to get ballsy, I'm gonna go a little bit past 25. Again, I don't wanna pop this thing out again. <laughs> you hit 20 on your other gauge, 21 maybe? 20, yeah, about 21. Well, that's going. I'm gonna grab this uh, valley cover. We'll work on that really quick. I can see oil coming up on a couple of these over here now too. But we'll just multitask. Got our Berrymans vice grip garage. Turn us on to the Berryman stuff. It's a good time. Does a good job of cleaning. Now I'm trying to be careful, get all the oil off of this mating surface without stripping the paint off of our newly painted cylinder heads. I'm hoping that once this whole thing's assembled, I will just clear coat the whole engine. I picked up some high heat clear at the OOO store. You know the one. Well, unfortunately for this build, the valley cover that we had before was so pitted, I had to replace it. Uh, the little tubes that went down to the knock sensors, this knock sensor was still, we had to pull the, the valley cover off with the knock sensors still in. I had to leave them behind because they were so bad. This one we were able to get out by just putting a pair of pliers over the whole knock sensor. This one was so bad, all that was left of it was the bottom plate. And we ended up having to drill and use an easy out to remove it. One of the first times we've ever seen an easy out actually work, but it did work. We were able to drill down into that broken off knock sensor. The easy out took the rest of it right out. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be great. I took the valley plate cover and got it all cleaned up. And once I wire brushed the tubes, I realized you can see daylight in the back tube in about three or four different spots. So we, what I was thinking is that it was so oily in here when we took this apart that surely it didn't rust. But apparently what happened is it rusted all the way through, which I've never seen aluminum pit all the way through. And it's eighth inch thick. And then oil started coming out here from the crankcase into the valley cover. And that's why it was so oily. So the oil didn't keep it from rusting, the rust caused the oil. Uh, these gaskets do go one way. There's a front and there's a top because the back is asymmetrical like this. The wider ear goes to the passenger side on the top. I did get new little tube seals. Not that we're going to need them anymore because I got a different cover. Uh, I opted to go with one of the more modern ICT billet flat covers, painted it black to match the kind of look and feel of the engine. But we are no longer going to have knock sensors on the top. Uh, I'm probably going to do one of the relocation kits that moves them down to this bolt hole here, and then on the other side, there's a tab, like a ring from the block, and there's a little adapter, ICT belt makes those, I think it's like 60 bucks for the set. Um, and it takes your knock sensors from up here where they constantly rust, down to here, where when they rust, it's not such a big deal. Quite so hard to remove. And this set from ICT uses uh, Allen head recessed hardware instead of the factory hardware. This type of cover is common with the, um, not on the third gen LS like this one, but on the fourth gen, when people do the, the DOD delete, the cylinder deactivation system, and active fuel management delete, they end up going with a different cover like this, just a flat one. Fourth gen LS is different. It has these posts 
in the valley here that run oil pressure up to the like the, the lifters get their oil feed differently because they're able to do cylinder deactivation. Not really sure how that system works. It's just, it's different. So this side it looks like every rocker has oil in it now. So I'm just waiting on two more over here to come up. I'll do another 90 degree rotation. It's like we're sitting at 15 PSI on the block. So we should be good. I'll just give this a little bit more time to come up. So we got oil coming up to this one now. It's got one more to go. So there's oil at uh, every rocker arm now. On both sides, we've got oil coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. Just uh, loosen the lid and let the pressure out of the system here. I'm gonna finish putting this top cover on. All right. I'm gonna get this contraption unhooked here. Get our oil plug back in, and that oiling system should be good to go. Oh yeah, that's a lot. All right, well. May as well move on to valve covers. And we're running out of things to do on this, but we got definitely got valve covers, oil pump, power steering pump bracket, and this uh, little crossover tube for coolant. And then I think this uh, LQ4 is gonna be ready to get buttoned up. 